Before we left QED, I promised Andy Wilson that I'd clear up a few misconceptions that Americans might have about England in general, and Andy Wilson in particular. So, for the record, despite what you may have heard, the food was delicious, the weather was fantastic, and I had the worst teeth of anyone we met. And also, despite what you also may have heard, Andy Wilson does not sell underage Filipino boys on Tuesdays or Thursdays, nor does he deal heroin after 4 p.m. Jesus, what are you people <laughs> doing at night? Why right? are your businesses closed? <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, we had an amazing time last weekend, and we wanted to share as much of it as we could with you, partly so you could attend vicariously through us and partly so you'll make a bit more of an effort to make your way to Manchester next year. So with that in mind, we thought we would share our top 10 QED moments. Eli, would you like to start us off? Uh, sure. Uh, number 10. A uh, little selfish, I know, but we actually got a chance to have a meal one night with the organizers and the cog disc guys, and, and I got to say you might have been happy in your life but you'll never be listening to andy wilson describe the different types of pudding to cecil hat <laughs> <laughs> i will never not sleep again well, but see that fucked me all up because nobody told me that they just called dessert pudding so the, the waitress comes up to me at the end and she goes would you like a pudding and i'm like I'm a fucking grown-up. Why would you ask me that? I eat solid foods. You just saw me do it. So then they start bringing everybody cakes and pies and shit after that. I'm like, well, why the fuck did she only offer me pudding? I'd have taken some cake. She didn't think your teeth could handle it. Hey, hey. The two on the back left can still chew. They're not exact. I have to move the jaw back a bit. Still important to wrap your lips over the top. Just, you know, different, thing. different thing. Okay, this uh, next one's not directly it. related to the UK trip. So, uh... I'll start by agreeing with Noah that the food was pretty amazing and defied all the stereotypes we've been hearing. Absolutely. Anyway, um, one of my favorite things to do during the trip was watching Tom and Cecil watch Eli order vegan food. <laughs> like, it was just amazing. Every single clause of every single sentence in Eli's order made their eyes glaze over more and more <laughs> and more. And then Tom would just eventually reach a breaking point and become viscerally angry that meat food was being neglected <laughs> in the order. And he'd accidentally shatter his fork into pieces yeah, or something. Yeah, right. It would crush into dust. And, and just to give you the complete picture here, we should know that Eli can't order food without changing it. I mean, I get it, I get it. You know, vegan, save the endangered cows, etc. But the 11th time you hear a person ask somebody to put the soy butter in a ramekin and place it at least 11 <laughs> centimeters away from the arugula, it's hard not to roll your eyes far enough to see your temporal lobe. Is it so unreasonable to ask for a tomato juice in a chilled glass without ice with a slice of kumquat? <laughs> Apparently the woman who worked at McDonald's thought so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, so number eight. I, I, at first, I had watching Heath try to squeeze into that little tiny Ryan Air seat on the airplane. That was pretty fucking it's funny. Ridiculous. But... Like, it was like kindergarten. <laughs> it doesn't really count as a QED moment, though. That happened before. So I'll take the obvious one. It was like watching Shaq try to lower himself into a Hot Wheels car. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> So, obviously, we always have a blast when we record, but we almost never get to record from the same room. And not only did we get to do that this week, and we're actually doing it right now, but when you add in a hundred or so fans of the show, it makes it an experience that I will never forget. It was just amazing. Absolutely. It's true. It's always a good time, and it allows me to punish the people who didn't come by doing as much visual humor as possible. Look for that on <laughs> next week's game. <laughs> Look for it. Look for it. You won't see it. Funny, it. funny motions. Quit. <laughs> He's doing some now, by the way. He's also apparently mad that you didn't come to our hotel room in Edinburgh. So he's doing some visual humor now. It's all, it's all one show. It's not my fault you bitches choose to listen. Jesus. Uh, number seven. Getting to talk to... <laughs> number seven. Getting to talk seriously about magic. I never really get to share that, that part of my life with this part of my life. And it was really wonderful to sort of chat with people who only know me through this show about that other part of something I really care about. Yeah. No, I hated that I had to miss that. But you guys were on a across from the live cognitive dissonance record. So I went upstairs and took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number six. I genuinely enjoyed using the nearly infinite buying power of American dollars for a week. Yeah, right. <laughs> a lot of fun. When we first arrived, I gave someone a $20 bill, and it got me a wheelbarrow of 50-pound notes. 
Pretty sure I own several large properties in the UK now, which may include all four railroads and hotels on the greens. Holy shit. I swear, though, I had so much trouble taking their money seriously. I mean, I know it's money. I get it. Our money looks weird to them, too. But every time I bought something, I felt like I just tricked the cashier. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since Brexit, the conversion's pretty hard. You give them $100 American, and you own their business. Yeah, right, right. And, right, and exactly. their children. <laughs> All right, so number five. This is a pretty obvious one for you. It, it almost made number one on my list. Learning the term cockwomble. <laughs> I mean, word. granted, the English had a head start on speaking English and all, so you'd expect that they'd have the best insults, but I feel like my life will now be divided into the pre- and post-calling people cockwomble eras. <laughs> the PC and AC eras. Yes, in the year of our <laughs> cockwomble, exactly. This is the simultaneously greatest insult ever and also most British insult ever. <laughs> And for the record, there seems to be a great deal of disagreement on the precise definition, but who gives a shit? It's not one of those words that needs a definition. If I call you a cockwomble, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, four, and I, I have to say this. This was the best put-on convention I have ever been Amazing. to. Amazing. Really Fantastic. Was. And, and we got to tell Andy and Marsh this in person, but we had a lot of fans who came because they wanted to see us, they wanted to see Cogdis, and they'd never been to a skeptical convention before, and this was... And what was genuinely awesome about QED is that everyone I asked said to me, yes, I'm coming back next year, whether you're here or not. And, and that's what QED does. It creates community. You know, we were talking to someone on our second night there and she said, you know, I don't go to skeptical meetups and cons and stuff because I feel like they're mostly just a chance for skeptics to look down their nose at people. And, and honestly, I've been to those yes. conventions where uh -huh. there's the standard like homeopathy is stupid jerk off talk and, and <laughs> everything at QED avoided that. I mean, silly as it sounds, it was just truly an educational, communal experience. Yeah, and, and honestly, I, I kind of, and, and no offense to any of the organizers at any of the other conventions I've been to. I've been to some really good conventions, but anyone who wants to put on an atheist or skeptical conference should have to go to QED one time just to see how it's done. I had no idea they could be done that well. Yeah, masterclass from Andy and Marsh and everybody involved. Yeah. Fantastic. Speaking of which. Number three, two words. Drunk Mark. <laughs> oh my God, this was so much goddamn fun. Uh, so on Sunday, once the conference is finally wrapping up and Marsh got to take off his MI6 earpiece, <laughs> he finally got to relax, which meant he proceeded to slowly drink and increase in volume and also slowly decrease in distance from his face to yours. <laughs> so by the end of the night, he's about two inches max from the face of whoever he's talking to. Now, it might sound like a bad thing if you haven't experienced this firsthand, but it's actually delightful and highly entertaining. Oh, he's hot. It, also yeah. because he's hot, especially if you're talking about how Brexit is a great idea, yeah. <laughs> which he was, or how Eli looks like an adorable baby boy and I look like a baby deer. Hey, I'm just saying, at the closest I got to late at QED was Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the amazing thing about Marsh. Marsh is full of fascinating information. I mean, really is. I mean that genuinely. He's super smart, super fun to talk to. But A, he's British, and therefore he's the opposite of me. But <laughs> B, he spends most of his life in rooms full of assholes pretending they have a point. Right. This is a guy who ended homeopathy in the north of England this year by never going, fuck, I've heard this. <laughs> <laughs> so drunk Marsh is just the tantric orgasm of skepticism. He's just, Crystals, mate, it's so funny. You know what I heard? This woman comes up to me, oh, fuck you. Fuck. All right, so at number two, and we've already hinted around uh, on this in a couple of them, but hanging out with Tom and Cecil. Honestly, if there are two more fun human beings to spend a weekend with, I have not met him. I mean, don't get me wrong. You guys are great and all, but he's always off getting laid now. And yeah. Eli, you scare me progressively more <laughs> as it gets later at night. But those guys are fucking awesome. Plus, they're loud as fuck, so I don't seem like the obnoxious American in the group. It's also yeah. nice. Being in a restaurant with Tom is like being in the background of a cartoon. <laughs> right? <laughs> I want three bottles of whiskey and two dinners. <laughs> Duality is not a virtue. <laughs> That's my Tom voice now. You have a lot to catch up on. Yeah, and you should have been here. And by that I mean in our hotel room. <laughs> Don't blame yourself. And I, I have to share one Tom and Cecil story in particular, mostly a Tom story. I, I'm in my hotel room after the last day catching up on some work, and Eli texts me that Aaron with the Skeptic Zone podcast wanted to get a few minutes on the microphone with us. Which we nailed, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. One take, no edits. We each caught a fly with chopsticks. <laughs> Great show. Again, you had to be... 
in a place you That's couldn't have possibly been. Yeah, exactly. But trust us, this is all really funny stuff. So I head down to the bar to meet up with everybody, and I'm still two floors away in the elevator when I start hearing Tom's laugh. So I walk in the bar. Tom, I am not exaggerating at all. Tom is laying on the floor, feet in the air, tears in his eyes, filling the city of <laughs> Manchester with laughter because Eli had just told him the queen owned all of England's swans. <laughs> she sort of does. Well, and this fact will apparently <laughs> never stop being funny to Tom. Okay, so the backstory on this is actually pretty minimal. Tom is talking to someone at the bar about how, like, weird facts about England and the Queen. And I mentioned my fun bit of trivia, which is that technically the Queen owns all the mute, white, unmarked <laughs> swans on open water. But I just say, you know, the Queen owns all the swans. So Cecil Googles it, and when he finds it, Tom laughed harder than I have ever seen him laugh. He army crawled across the floor with <laughs> mud. He may never recover. I can't imagine how he would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number one, and I think this is true of all of us, meeting listeners. I, oh, I, 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 absolutely. I speak for all of us when I say we're always pretty blown away by like anyone who says they love our stuff, but meeting you in person when I've only gotten like an email from you in the past or interacted on Facebook or Twitter is absolutely mind-blowing. And it's mind-blowing to know that this thing that is so often just the three of us sitting around making each other laugh goes out to actual living, breathing human beings. I, I cannot express what it means in the moment and I, I certainly won't do it here but genuinely it means the world to us and i am overwhelmed with imposter syndrome and i apologize <laughs> for my handwriting if i sign something <laughs> also none of you had sex with me none of you had sex with heath at the same time it's fine i'm not mad I'm just gonna hang around the elevators more I can't believe you still have to ask what's wrong with his voice so yeah to woolly Susanna, hannah james paul lisa and Ruth and Emily. And, and, and all the other amazing fans that we Alice. met over the weekend. Thanks so much for making the 3,300-mile trip so worthwhile. Thanks to the UK more generally for being such good hosts. But most of all, thanks to the asshats that voted leave so that our money would be worth almost twice as much <laughs> as it was six months before we left. I bought a boy, but it died in my suitcase. Dude, what did Andrew just say? <laughs> he died in my suitcase. <laughs> he came that way. <laughs> Dying. <laughs>